Well, hey there, you're on the internet. Welcome to Shimmertastic Week and Change. And welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now, uh, as I mentioned, it's, simmer it's Shimmertastic Week and Change because there are uh, 10 in this series. And I will be going through all of them in alphabetical order. So, <laughs> this is the first one. This is Blue Lightning. Have it here in sample form. Now, all of these samples were provided by a mysterious benefactor who initially wished to be called he who shall not be named, but now wishes to be known as the New Zealand benefactor. So, much gratitude towards him. Now, uh, these have been getting a lot of press lately, I guess. Uh, it's from Diamond's new series of inks, which include glitter, of course, I've been shaking it so you can't see the glitter settle, but uh, there you can see some of the swirlies of glitter. Yeah, uh, I was a TA for a kindergarten art class, and uh, I have been traumatized by glitter, so I'm not a big fan of glitter. So these inks are really not my bag, but uh, I'm here to serve the people. So here we go. Now, uh, these were the two pens I used. This is a Pilot Metropolitan with a Japanese fine nib, which is not easy for me to write with because it's like writing with the corner of a razor blade. It is extremely fine, and we'll get to that. And then I also use this Jin Hao X450, and I love my X450s because they tend to be pretty broad and pretty wet, and this one usually is. So yeah. Uh, now, admittedly, in these comparisons. I don't really have much like this. Now I hope this comes through. There's this glitter everywhere. In fact, the camera's not even picking up nearly as much of it as there is in person. I may have to figure out how to better display that. But <laughs> yeah, uh, there are not a ton of inks with this glitter built in, at least not many that are meant for fountain pens. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, mostly what I had to match was this blue color, which is kind of a, a standard turquoise, so I actually had something like 12 possible comparables, and I just narrowed it down. So here's Blue Lightning, and here's Géobin's Blue Pervenche, and uh, quite similar. Here's Toucan's Bright Blue, again, quite similar. Here's Diamond Turquoise, which is maybe a little darker, but very similar. And lastly, Waterman Inspired Blue, which maybe shades a bit more, but still quite similar. Because it's a turquoise, and turquoise is turquoise. Now, let's check out the chromatography, which, uh, yeah, sometimes my camera struggles with light blue, but I will do what I can. Uh, as, actually, let's put this on a white background. Yeah, as you can see, there's a big blank space right through here. Uh, so there's like a whole lot of nothing. And then the blue travels up. And you get a kind of dark band up at the top. And as you might be able to tell, the glitter is all at the bottom. So that really didn't move. You can see where that initial line was. Now here's where I let it dry which is actually pretty much the same. In fact, in some ways, this big blank space is even more blank. But again, the glitter all stayed where it was initially put. So, yeah. Now, water resistance, or I should say chemical tests. Acetone did absolutely nothing, except I think it partially dissolved some of the glitter, which is something that acetone does. It breaks down plastics. Water really got it moving. It is really, really gone. It dyed the page a little bit. Bleach is completely gone. But what's funny is, I don't know if this will come through. Apparently it doesn't want to. But yeah, the glitter is still there where the ink used to be, which is kind of funny. Now, ammonia pen flush also really got it moving, but since it's a chemical, it's, you know, it's ammonia. It started to affect the paper. Hydrogen peroxide also got it moving, but again, that also started to affect the paper, so. All right, so <laughs> on to the paper test. Here's uh, Claire Fontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Uh, yeah, 
as I say here, enough glitter to make even a unicorn from Lisa Frank puke and that I may have seizures because holy mother of God, so much glitter. Now, uh, this was the first ink that I tested. And so when I was cleaning out the pens afterwards, I had an idea what to expect, but I wasn't sure. I, will, I didn't take a picture that time, but I did take a picture later on. I will insert it now. That's what, that's what it looks like when you have to clean out these pens afterwards. Um, yeah, so anyways, that fine, that Japanese fine took 17 seconds to dry, but as you can probably tell from these smears, it's, what's interesting is the blue component because there's a blue ink and then a silver glitter is the, the blue part seems to be a very wet flowing ink and the silver glittery bits are just troublesome. But yeah, uh, if you look at it at the right angle, kind of like we are now, you can see shading in the writing, which is kind of nice. It's a nice sort of standard turquoise. And like from this angle, you can see the shading in the scrubby and then you turn it. And I mean, that's just solid silver in that bottom scrubby, which by the way, uh, that Jin Ao X450 took 26 seconds to dry, which honestly I was expecting a bit worse because a lot of times when you have very dense ink, it's quite slow to dry. Now there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. All very good in that regard. And of course I say sheen is different from glitter. Sheen is where the ink piles up and becomes shiny. Often it's a, it's a contrasting color. This is glitter, it's not sheen. Now water test, as we might have been led to believe before, is essentially nothing. Essentially nothing. And then I just spread the glitter in sort of like an even blanket all across there. You can kind of make out the dots where the X450 used to be, but actually what's interesting is those are mostly glitter. So yeah, not a lot of water resistance on this. Now next up is Fabriano Echo Qua. It's an 85 grams per square meter paper. And we have largely the same results. Uh, you know, when you look at it at the right angle, you get some nice shading. The uh, Japanese fine took 16 seconds. The broad and wet Jin Hao took 26. And again, when we turn it, we just get glitter everywhere. Which uh, is just, just so, yeah. It's, it's, it's intense. Um, also, it did dry on the nib quite quickly, like surprisingly quickly. So occasionally I would have to use my damp paper towel twi trick where I would just sort of like, you know, go like this with the nib until uh, I could kind of get it moving again. Yeah, and then here, just to say, like if the glitter settles, like what I do is I just go like this with the pen. It sort of gets it moving again. So yeah, but again, water test. It's really, it's really, really gone. Only the faintest bit remains. And again, there's just like an even blanket of thin glittering and like even still, it's kind of sticking to the papers and the paper in some spots, but yeah, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, no sheen. Now there is something I want to point out. Now, when I finish with these tests, I sort of stack all the papers together and on the back of every sheet of paper, I know this isn't going to show it. Oh, no, wait, there it is. The glitter smears after it's dry, where it's particularly heavy. And so like, this is the back of a, a scrubby, as you can see. And so it must have been rubbing against the page behind it. And so there's glitter all across the back of this page. It's just most noticeable there. And it will smear. Like if I were to, you know, yeah. And then you've got just like this swath of glitter all through there. So. Something to be aware of, this glitter does smear after it's dry, and I finished these tests maybe a week ago. So yeah, next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter, where again, if we look at it at the right angle, we get great shading. And then if we look at it to the side, we just get intense glitter. A Japanese fine took 15 seconds, the broad and wet Jin Hao took 26. So this is, it's, the dry times are changing very little in between these denser papers, but as you might be able to tell, See how it gets darker around here in a few spots? That might be sheen. The thing is, I can't tell because it's hidden under so much glitter. 
that looks like it might have been a sheen if there wasn't so much glitter. And then again, because it's drying fairly quickly on the nib, there are some other spots where the ink can get quite dark, and I feel like in other circumstances we might have had sheen, but here we kind of don't. But yeah, no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. Like I say I'm not sure if there's sheen, but yeah, very well behaved. Again, there's glitter all across the back of the page, but it's just like a little bit everywhere. So it's hard to get on camera. But yeah, um, essentially no water resistance. It's really gone. And just a blanket of glitter. Now, next up is Tomoe River Paper, which is known for drawing out shading and sheen and dry times and echo. And honestly, I was expecting much, much worse on this paper because, again, it's a very intense ink. It has things in it that can draw out the dry times. Now, that Japanese fine only took 19 seconds to dry. I was really surprised. I was expecting it to be much, much longer. Broad and Wet Jin Hao, I know it's 34 and I usually stop counting at 30, but honestly, I was expecting something much, much worse. Now here, again, we can see there's a sort of a dark outline around the darkest parts of the scrubby, or I should say the heaviest parts of the scrubby. And again, I feel like that could have been sheen, but we can't really see any because it's lost under all the glitter. But as you might be able to tell, as we've gone through these tests, Consistently, that bottom scrubby from the X450 has remained very super glittery, but then we look at the top one from the Metro and it's getting less and less so. We have what I've come to term as a glitter pileup in the Metropolitan. Something about, I don't know, the feed or maybe what the feed is made out of is causing the ink to I don't know, the glitter, it, it's like it's a sieve and it won't let the glitter through and so it piles up and piles up and piles up. And the blue will get through kind of all right, but the glitter will just keep backing up and backing up and that's how we ended up with the picture of the fee that I inserted earlier. But yeah, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread. There might be some echo in the scrubby, but really not much. This is a lighter shade of blue. And I said, you know, maybe some sheen, but again, we can't see it because it's hidden under the glitter. So, yeah. And again, really, really no water resistance. <laughs> like, at all. It's really gone. So, yeah. Now, for the next three tests, I just used that Metropolitan with the Japanese fine, except to write the name. And, as you can probably see, here with the X450, oh, my camera. Still get a ton of glitter all through there. See how it's super glittery? Now let's look at this writing. And we just get sort of like a evenly distributed little bit. Like just a little bit. Oh, and as I said here, for some reason the light blue color and the silver glitteriness keeps reminding me of the ads for that movie Frozen. But yeah, anyway, so here on the world's worst 20 pound copier paper, that Japanese fine spread like a bandit. So here it is on Tomoe River where it's not going to spread. And here, this looks more like maybe a Japanese medium or a, a generous Western fine. Yeah, so, but that is something that this paper does. It hates ink. But also, if we come in close, as you might be able to tell, there's really not much or nearly any feathering. Which surprised me, because a lot of times inks that will spread will also feather. Now on here it took two seconds to dry, which is not shocking. We don't have a lot of shading. We have nearly none. But yeah. There's a lot of echo and show through, but there's very little full on bleed and where it is, it's, you know, dots, like where you're dotting an eye, like there, or, you know. So it's, that's actually better than I was expecting, considering the fact that the blue component of this ink flows very wetly and the glitter was piling up and wasn't coming out as much. So, I mean, I expected lots of bleed, I expected lots of feathering. We didn't get feathering, we didn't get a lot of bleed, we did get some, a good bit of show through, but yeah. 
Now this is more absorbent paper. More absorbent paper tends to draw the ink in, make it harder to wash out, which is kind of what happened here. But it's almost like it just washed out and into the paper around it. It just sort of like <laughs> seeped out. So it got much paler, it got much harder to read. That would not be easy to recover. Now, next up is, as I say here, mead-like paper. So this is actually just like a, from Staples, it's a spiral notebook, you know, where you get like five for like $3 or something it, from like a million years ago. So it is a very cheap standard notebook paper, but it is not mead. Uh, did much better. Like if we look at the line width on the 20 pound versus here, we see that there's almost no spread. The line is much smaller. And again, we have no feathering whatsoever. We even retain a tiny bit of shading, which you can probably see. It took five seconds to dry, which is maybe a little longer than average. And again, we don't have a ton of glitter. And what we do, it's sort of evenly distributed. And yet up here, up at the X450, we still have lots of glitter. No bleed. Not even much show through or echo because it is a, still a fairly light blue. But again, yeah, just there's just no water resistance whatsoever. It is just utterly gone. Now, lastly is moleskin notebook paper, which I hate because it's terrible. It's very poorly made and yet they make you pay a lot for it. Now, it's six seconds to dry, but here we get something we didn't see in even the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. We get crazy feathering and wooliness and just ugliness. I mean, look, you can see the pulp of the paper. And what's interesting is the glitter almost gets lost in here. It gets very hard to see a lot of the time. <sighs> and, uh, yeah, it, it just straight up came through the back. Just damn near everywhere. And again, this is a Japanese find. It's like writing with a razor blade and we still got these results. And then let's just check out this water test. I honestly don't know if I have words for this. If you do, please leave them in the comment down below to help others where my own words are failing me because that's just hideous. Yeah, so there you go. One down, nine to go. Diamond Shivertastic Blue Lightning. Apparently it reminds me of the movie Frozen. It's, uh, it's a very standard, sort of straightforward turquoise. It has silver glitter. I would never use this ink, personally. Some people love this. Uh, it's not for me. There's a market for for it, but it's not for me. Uh, and spoiler alert, I think I used a Pilot Metropolitan of one form or another for all of these tests and every single one, and I think I used maybe four or five different ones, all had trouble with these inks. The feed, something's going on. I also used uh, several of these X450s. They did better, they did much better, but there was still kind of a pile up. So yeah, anyways, uh, on to the next nine. Oh my God. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Bye.